What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how to cut a tousled lob. This haircut's great on fine hair, wavy hair, curly hair, uh, any type of hair because of the length that we keep within the exterior part of the cut. We're gonna add some interior texture and layering so that in the end style, you get a lot of movement within the haircut. So excited to show you guys this cut. Let's get started, here we go. We start off, we're gonna separate left and right. So I comb the hair in the direction I wanna go. So I really get the hair flowing. That allows me to easily run that kind of front tooth of the comb through it. So now we've separated left and right. Now we're gonna separate front and back. And I wanna follow from the high point, that apex point of the head, and I wanna go straight down the hairline. I'll comb this hair from the front of the head forward. Slide your clip up under and clip it away. And I comb the rest over nice and tight that slide my clip up underneath. So now we're gonna start working in the back. And for this haircut, I'm gonna work from the occipital bone over to behind the ear. So just like that, horizontal parting. So now we've got our back. We're gonna start on the right hand side. I'm gonna tilt her head just slightly because she's gonna have shoulders in real life, right? So I wanna tilt her head just a little bit. It'll help me with my angle. Does tilting her head actually affect the haircut? In my opinion, if I think about all the education that I've had, I do not think that tilting your head affects the haircut. The only way that it really does uh, do anything is that it helps pull the angle of which I'm holding her hair away from her shoulders. So if she tilts her head, let's say she goes extreme and we tilt her head like this, now my angle that I wanna cut is way up here, right? So her shoulders are down here. So it pulls this hair away from the shoulders. If her head is up like this, now I'm combing her hair into her shoulders and trying to cut it into her shoulders. And that's gonna give me a different look. But that's the reason, because the shoulders are in the way, not because a lot of people talk about the skin tightening and all of that when you tilt the head. I do think that gives a slight effect, but I don't think it's anything dramatic or anything too much. So I wanna pause from the video real quick to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by MinervaBeauty.com. They've been sponsoring this channel for a really long time. They have a lot of really cool salon furniture and equipment. So if you guys are looking to upgrade your salon, go check out MinervaBeauty.com. Just look at this styling chair that they have. These are brand new. They're all based on fall colors. So if you're looking to kind of ramp things up for the fall, just go to the front page of MinervaBeauty.com. Click on shop now. You can check out the whole fall collection. This blue tone has got to be my favorite thing that they've ever put out. So go check it out. Again, MinervaBeauty.com. So now I went occipital bone down with my sectioning. The reason I do that is because this is all at the same angle on the head. You can see where it starts to peel away. It peels away right at the occipital bone. So I know that this whole entire section in my hand is kind of all at the same angle out of the head. It doesn't change until we get a little bit further up. So I don't have to worry about um, any of my angles until then. Now I've got her head tilted. So when I pull this hair away from the head just a little bit, um, it's going to be off of her shoulders, which is very uh, good for us. Um, and then I'm gonna give a slight little over direction back because I want a little bit of a forward push of the weight. The head is round. So if I hold the hair in one place and I cut it, it's gonna to wanna to follow wherever the head is curving. So it's gonna get longer and heavier away from my fingers when I pull it back. I want to have this have a nice little lightweight feel. So I'm gonna come in here uh, with my razor. My tool of choice to start off this haircut is going to be the Tri Razor by Free Salon Education. If you don't have a Tri Razor yet, go check it out on our online store, freesaloneducation.com. This is a super cool, versatile razor. It's got three different sides. One side cuts 100% of the hair, the other sides cut 25% and 50%. So if you wanna create texture, take out weight, uh, create movement within a haircut, Tri Razor is the way to go. You can pick up this razor and the blades that go inside all on free saloneducation.com. And I'm gonna softly push on the hair. A lot of people get in a rush to cut the hair off. What are we in a rush for? Um, the faster I cut this, the more blunt this line will be. The more blunt this line is, the more work I have to do in the dry cut. So make sure 
you, pay, you have patience when you're cutting and just softly cut your line. So now I get a really nice soft line in the haircut. So here, bring this hair back and you'll notice, you might not notice, but just in case you didn't notice, I'm working from the inside or from the center of the head out. And I did that on both sides. I don't want to now come in here and cut this and work my way through because this might be a little bit shorter than I want to push my line in. So I go here, and again, I'm moving this razor about an inch and not slamming through the hair. I could just go in and slice it off, but it would give me a hard line. You can see a little bit of a forward line on there. That's because of the curve. I over-directed it back a little bit, slightly, cut a balanced line in the back, and it pushes a little bit of weight towards the front. Now, where's your next section? So if I hold the comb on the head, I can kind of see where the comb rocks. And this is in razor cutting. This is not necessarily in uh, scissor cutting. Uh, razor cutting, you can take a little bit extra hair uh, and cut through it. So I come across now, and here is my next section. I had her head here like this because I was cutting an angle that was down here more. You can't see that comb. Wow, that comb just disappears in the light. So there you go. So here, that was the angle. So we were pulling everything down. Now we're at this angle. So if I pull it straight down here, it'd be basically at zero degrees, right? Coming off the head shape. A lot of people mistake no elevation with zero degrees. Zero degrees on a round surface changes all the time. This is zero um, on a curve, right? So if this is zero, this is 90, right? Like that. So this is gonna be actually pretty heavy. You're gonna see a really strong weight line unless we elevate it just a little bit above zero or you use a razor, which will soften the shape and not give you a hard line. Still bringing it back, still cutting that balanced line in the haircut. I'm doing the same thing on this side. And then I'll take down my last two, my last pieces. This is the crown. And in the crown, I don't have to tilt her head at all because the crown angle is here. So I just need, I don't really even need any elevation uh, because I'm just getting a nice, just really finalizing that soft line that we created. There's not much to cut. Now, the reason I say this is an easy haircut to switch your clients to, you're not cutting a lot of layers into it. Obviously go shorter with this as well. Um, I'm preserving mannequin length here a little bit. In my 30s, I would have chopped this thing all the way off. Now that I'm 40, I conserve, I'm conserving a little bit more. Also in my 30s, they used to give them to me and now they don't anymore. I don't know. What they're... It must cost more to make them now after COVID or something. So now all you have to do is really connect front and back. And because the front majority until the parietal ridge, which is right here, sits pretty much um, all in the same section. And then this parietal ridge area is basically all the same here. So um, you could break that into two sections if they have a lot of hair on the sides. You can see it's already kind of at the angle. So all I wanna do is just make sure that we continue that angle. So slide the razor through, just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the opposite side, comb this hair down. Um, I want to spend most of my time in the dry cut and the detail work because that really brings out the style. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blow dry this. That was a pretty simple technique there. Um, again, you could bring this up. It could, little, it could sit here. If you wanted, like at any level, you would cut it exactly the same. So 
Now we are going to uh, start working through the dry cut. So I just wanna give you guys a closer look on the FSE Hybrid Elite scissor. This is a 5.65 inch scissor. We also have it in 6.15 inch as well. Um, it's a dry cutting hybrid scissor. What we mean by hybrid is the fact that it has slide cutting, but then at the very tip of the scissor, it's precision cutting. So it allows you to go in there on dry hair, slide through the hair, but then also be able to put in those precision lines using just the tip of the blade. So perfect for point cutting uh, when you wanna go really deep into a point cut and then close and actually connect to the hair and cut it. And then also great for slide cutting, stroking techniques, tease cutting techniques, and it has a lifetime guarantee against any manufacturer defects. So this scissor will last you the rest of your career. So go check out the Hybrid Elite Scissor on freesaloneducation.com. Switching over to my dry cutting scissor. Um, I think I told you guys this before, but um, the way a dry cutting scissor works is this part here. So on ours, it's part dry cutting, part uh, wet cutting. But up to this first word that says sliding, this is all dull, um, this part of the blade. On this side, it's sharp. This side's sharp all the way through. This side is dull all the way to this point and then sharp from this line up to the tip. And that's so you can do point cutting, uh, uh, perimeter cutting, it's just perfect for all dry cutting because a lot of times you want to cut a line, you got to switch your scissor. This one, you don't have to do that, but you still get the benefits of when you do slide and you go into the guts of the, the blade, you get a nice kind of buttery feel to it. Um, that dullness on the one blade allows that slide and glide through it um, as you're working. So no, yeah, you shouldn't use this one unless you want it to, you want to slide right? Um, or if you're point cutting. So like point cutting is great because when it goes in, the tip will fully cut it, but it'll slide through the rest and it won't take out as much bulk. So it's really nice for that. But if you're trying to cut anything like a line or lines within the haircut at all, you want to switch to our other scissors cut dry hair. They cut it precise though. These cut dry hair with movement. You know, so okay. I think that's a big misconception uh, with dry cutting scissors, like true dry cutting, is they think that you can do a full dry haircut with it and that other scissors can't. Other scissors are great with dry hair um, unless they're not a good quality scissor, but a good quality metal will cut perfectly lines through dry hair. Um, okay. But a dry cutting scissor is dull, so it slides. All right, so we're gonna start off, we are gonna do a little point cutting. I'm not really worried, I want a, more of a perimeter line, um, but you can see that softness that the, the razor created, but I still want it to look like a clean haircut. So we're gonna go through point cut. I wanna do all my interior work, and then the last thing I do is hit that exterior because um, if I do the exterior and then cut the interior, it might shatter up my exterior again. So I wanna get that all done then go in and start doing some, uh, some more work. And one thing I'm gonna show you guys, actually this is a really fun technique for creating uh, movement in the crown. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a large circle point cut everything underneath it and then I'm gonna do a technique on that circle. And I'm just gonna elevate this hair and point cut and what that's doing is it's going to remove a ton of, uh, create a lot of movement in the interior part of this haircut, but then this is gonna blanket over it, um, which will give me that movement, but not showcase a ton of layers in the end result. So I'll just work my way around the clock. So I started at six o'clock, now we're going to five o'clock here. Four. And I'm not taking any length. So now we're at the ear, three o'clock. And I'm basically creating a line, um, a very shattered line, but a line from that guideline. So now we go seven o'clock here. Eight.
and 9. Now the scissor I'm switching to for this technique is the FSE Dual 20 Pro. This is my go-to scissor for texturizing and blending hair. This scissor has a dual handle so you can flip it between blending and texturizing. So when you have the blade down, it's going to blend the hair and when you have the teeth down, it's going to texturize the hair. And we've got it right now for an incredibly low price on freesaloneducation.com, go check it out. I'm going in at an angle and my blade is down. If blade is down, it's blending. So we're here blending the bottom, just removing some weight. You can obviously go into this a little bit more too. Just look for that bulk. That's why smoothing this hair out works really well and, and cut it that way as well. Blade is still down. I'm gonna cut the exterior line coming through here and where I see that it's a little bit soft gonna come in tap it a little bit and just define that line slightly and here I'm not over directing it all back anymore I'm just following the line that I created so this is all staying just like that so I'm gonna take this out I've got this crown area. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our scissor, just like this, open it on the hair and come down into the hair and cut. So it's here, down and cut like this. And we just work. Now you wanna do this with a dry cutting scissor or just be very light handed with a wet cutting scissor. How I like to do this iron is twist, go slow, and then fast. And that'll give me that kind of beach wave, but then a little bit straighter on the ends. All right, so there we go. Like a little modern lobby, long bob. Very easy to talk a client into getting something like this. Um, it's great for fine hair clients because it leaves that bulk, but it does add some movement. So. It's good for that. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys very much. Uh, I love hanging out with you guys. Thank you guys, I'll see you. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below. I want details on what your favorite part of this video was and what parts you feel like you can use. I know this is gonna be an easy haircut for you to transition your clients into. Make sure if you're looking for any of the tools I used in this video, the Tri Razor, the Dual 20 Pro, or the Hybrid Elite Scissor, or any of our other scissors that we have to offer, go to freesaloneducation.com. Check out our latest deals. We've got all of these tools at incredible prices. So go check it out, Free Salon Education. Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.